hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Life After Lockup, Season 3, Episode 52. I don't know why they keep... I need the Episode 1 or Episode 3. These 50s are stupid, okay? But let's go ahead and get into this review. It is still Saturday. I am still trying to relax, so I will not be on screen. Even though y'all are getting this Sunday, this is been recorded on Saturday, okay? But anyway, um, do not forget to make sure to subscribe to my channel to become a whole J Bird, J Bird, dun dot 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 dot, and all that goodness and stuff. Okay, do not forget to like the video, comment in the comment section. You can also share it on your social media. You can also relax and relate and release, center yourself and everyone around you. Girl, y'all, oh god. I'm so sorry, y'all, but again, it is Saturday. I've been recording all day, but again, make sure to relax, relate, release, center yourself and everyone around you, and always inhale and exhale because it helps us all feel good, okay? Do not forget to also follow me on social media on IG. It is J underscore Lee's underscore corner on Twitter. It is J Lee's corner, okay? And y'all know to like and subscribe, okay? Let's get into the first couple over here. We have Brittany and Marcelino, who I feel like I just want them to go away only because I never feel like they're giving us an authentic story. I always feel like this is something that already happened and they play reenactment. And that's not cool or whatever. But again, you know, we do see them get home because they've been, the past, what, two or three episodes, their scenes have been them trying to go to that crackhead rapper's house to get whatever's in the house, and they were not able to get it. And then the last episode, we seen them basically break into the house and still not get what they came for, okay? So when they get home, Marcelino was upset and aggravated because he's like, I'm not mad at you. But I don't like the way you react. I don't like the way you were um, getting so, so mad and flipped out because I don't want to lose you. I guess for her going back to jail because if you're out here fussing, fighting with people or whatever and losing your cool, you could end up going back to prison. Okay, and y'all have all these kids, and he is not going to be left alone with all the children. Okay, so again, you know, her thing is I'm I feel embarrassed. Okay, and like I failed. This is the work I work so so hard, and then to fail, it feels like I'm a I'm a void. Okay, I just I'm my girl. Okay, and I feel like she's failed in life before, doing other things. And this is also a good learning lesson. In business, you're going to learn really expensive lessons, some not so expensive lessons, and some free lessons. This one was a little bit, you know, it cost a little bit of money. This is an $8,000 lesson to learn to make sure the business is always on paper and not verbal, okay? So sometimes you have, you can't pick and choose what lessons you learn. So don't look at it as a failure. You went to the school of hard knock life your whole life. This is a another one okay and i do feel like they not hurting for money because that's a big house they just bought but in this show gives them a little bit of money too and i feel like she'd be having endorsements so i feel like y'all ain't hurting for that eight grand she's just upset that somebody play her you let crackhead robber play you and you're pissed which is fine okay but again i want something about them too and what's going on with them i just always feel like it's never about them okay but that's all that was that they had about them too let's move on to john and chris is this ain't john i put john john and christiana now, they're still getting married. Their wedding is two days away. And we see John on the side of some road making a phone call. I'm like, who's he calling? And why is he on the side of, I'm like, is he pull over and make a phone call? And, you know, he's calling Tara, you know, Christiana's sister. And he feels like, like, look, if you are out here getting high, don't come around here, okay? Because you are your sister's trigger, okay? When Christian is around you and you're using, it triggers her to you. So don't come around. Don't come to the wedding. Do not contact her if you are out there flicking with them damn drugs. They leave us be, Tara, because nobody has talked to her. So everyone has assumed she must be on drugs because why else would she not be answering anyone's phone calls? But I wonder... 
Okay, I wonder, is she not answering phone calls because she's in rehab trying to get clean, clean? I don't know. But even at the house, you know, when, you know, he talks to uh, Christiana, her mama, her mama looks so much better now. It's weird, okay? She's not all on that breathing machine. I could not breathe the machine. The oxygen tank or whatever. I'm like, they didn't get her out of the damn uh, meth house. So her lungs ain't being clogged up with meth. And I'm like, she walking on her own. She's not walking with that face mask with the oxygen tank. She got makeup on. She, the mama doing better. Okay, the health is better now. Because, again, you can't be had good health living in the meth lab. Okay, that, is a, that just doesn't happen. But when the mama, you know, Christiana and John talk, they all for the same way. If Tara on that shit, okay, she should not come around here. But when John go talk to the old man who married them the first time, okay, and he brings up how they don't want Tara around because she may be on drugs, the man say... Is that the only reason you don't want her around? He said, well, you know, even though me and her, you know what I'm saying, flirted a little bit, it was nothing more than that. No, that's, that's really the only reason I don't want her around. And the old man said, okay, because if you're out here, you know, doing shady shit, your marriage won't last anyway. I was like, let him know. Because John has never been faithful to any wife. He's always cheated over and over and over. So, again, this is his first time being faithful-ish to a wife. Um, we'll see what happens next. I don't really trust John, but again, he ain't my man. So let's go on to Stan. Stan and Lisa. Lisa McDowell. Okay. Um, Stan at the park. <laughs> Stan then went to the park in his little jogger pants, little hat, little jacket, and he's sitting on a little park bench and he's crying. Okay. Stan is sad because he's sitting up there remember, remembering his wife. Where's the white picture? Remembering he and his wife, okay? His wife passed away in 2012, and he brings up how amazing she was, how much they were great partners or whatever, and how they really had a great bond as husband and wife, and she was just everything. And, she, and they, apparently, she did things he needed to be done, so it seemed like it was like a shady marriage, but he, you know, he was looking for somebody to be like he was with her. He was hoping to have that with Lisa, Lisa McDowell. But he said all me and Lisa do is fight. Now he had like a little video of he and the wife, and they did seem happy, but who knows, okay? But his thing is like me and Lisa just fight, 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 fight. It's always a fight. We fight, fighting about this, we fussing about that. And it's nothing like my happy marriage. But you know, hopefully we can, you know, start with a clean slate and we can, you know, try again. How many times do y'all gonna try again? One, two. 18 more times? I'm like, what's it going to take? You and Lisa do not work out because y'all both be lying about things, okay? And we then see Lisa at home, and she's waking up, okay, from doing nothing. And she's like, where's Stan? 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 Oh, he may, he may not be here. She instantly gets on the computer, makes a fake Facebook page, and messages him to see if he'll take the bait. I'm like, first of all, he's an old coot. Okay, y'all are barely a couple. Y'all are also not happy. So, I mean, this is a, 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 a trial and tribulation is going to be had by all, okay? Now, when she makes the fake Facebook page and, you know, she sends him a friend request, she starts liking his photos, and, you know, she wants to see if he'll flirt. Man, look, the show made it seem like as soon as Stan was leaving that park about his, his, his old dead wife, um, you know, and then he gets these messages. It seemed like they're showing him driving and checking Facebook to the messages that Lisa, Lisa McDowell, is sending. And I was like, Stan, you are dumb. <laughs> but Stan's an old man, okay? Old men don't get, you can get catfish on social media, okay? It can really happen. But when the page comes through to him, he waves at the girl. Okay, that he does not know is Lisa, Lisa McDowell. Okay, and then then he starts having a conversation with this person, and they even like said plans to meet up. I'm like, no. And she said, you know, they, they 
they didn't they didn't show like a continuous conversation you will see a little bit of what she put a little bit of what he put but it do seem like he was for sure setting up a sex date okay and like you know let's get it done let's let's get it popping and i was like girl. but again i think his thing is lisa ain't giving him no cooch okay if she don't get no cooch he's a horny old cooch but still staying ain't shit for really responding to this fake page that Lisa sent him. Because is it wrong for Lisa to trap him? Yes. But he should not have talked to the girl. So again, we'll see what happens next episode because she's pissed. Because he's entertaining this person, okay? But I mean, that's what he do. <laughs> so Stan, excuse me, who acts like, you know, he's so fake with the Lisa, he only loved Lisa McDowell, he also liked the lady that Upe she made up, okay? Someone who favored Lisa, but with bigger boobs. Blonde hair, white woman, or whatever. Girl, Lisa's so pissed, but this, this is the thing. Lisa, Lisa, you should have never sent the message because he's tired of you already. You're trying to get your own replacement, okay? I was like, I just can't. It's just craziness, okay? Let's move on to Puppy and Amber, which I still don't even care that they're on the season, but they shouldn't be, okay? Now, Amber has now broken up with Sammy. We know at the, the double day, he left her stranded there, okay? She didn't did not talk to him for a couple of days. He then popped up to her house, and then she said he was completely flipping out, okay? Completely flipping out. You know, I can't believe how he was acting. You know, that's how he used to act in the past, and I do not want to have to get back around anyone who's like that. And then out the blue, Puppy pops up, okay? Puppy shows up because she wants to check on Amber, who's broken up with Sammy. And he had left her flowers at the door on her porch and puppy brought him in. Anyway, so again, you know, she tells puppy how, you know, his temper, you know, he scared me or whatever. And so I feel dumb for even giving him a chance because people kept telling me, you know, he hasn't changed. And I was like, he was. And look at this. He's doing the same shit he used to do. And we do see him calling her like, you know, I don't want to end this way. No, that's not what I meant. And she like, I ain't got time on calling no more. Leave me alone. Because, again, she feels like the same way he used to flip out back in the past is resurfacing. So she's smart to let that man go. So Puppy, who's very, very happy. Okay, for Amber to be single because she wants to bang Amber. Okay, yeah, let's throw all this shit away. Okay, let's pack up all this shit, burn these cars, burn it all. Okay, matter of fact, let's go somewhere. Sure, Amber then drive to what I assume was like a trash dumpster place or whatever because I felt like it was up under, you know, a dumpster there. And she know the guy who owns the place. And she said, this is where people come to, you know, get rid of junk. But she also was like, let's set it on fire. I'm like, what? You Is you a kleptomaniac? I'm like, well, is it, well, not, no, not a klepto, though. What, a klepto was a thief. Pyromaniac, that's what I'm going to say. Anyway, but again, she has Amber, you know, put all the stuff that was in the bag in the dumpster. And they proceed to... They didn't have anything to light it with at first, but then they did not want to get down to the dumpster. So Amber, being the criminal she is, made a, a Molotov cocktail. I was like, bitch, you just made, you really just made, you You should never show anyone you know how to make those, okay? Because not a normal person knows how to make them. And the fact that she knew, okay, I got this in my car, I got a little bottle, a little, a little cloth. Okay, got a little lot. I was like, no, you don't do that. So, yeah, that's how they set the stuff on fire. Well, the Molotov cocktail that she threw in the big old dumpster. And I was like, bitch, and the dumpster was empty, by the way. So it was like she burnt up a whole bunch of stuff. But again, she burnt up all the things that he had at her place. And now Puppy is also happy that Amber is single. Okay, and then she want to bump coochies. Amber does not want your coochie when she's sober, okay? I would not want to be with anyone who doesn't want me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would not want to do that. But for some reason, Puppy is happy. I'm like, Puppy, you have a boyfriend. Are you going to leave him for her? Get out of my face, Amber and Puppy. You know, we then have Brittany and Ray. 
Okay, and Brittany and Ray, you know, still want to have a child. And he has been home for about five months now. And, you know, she wanted to figure out, why am I not getting pregnant? We're always having sex. Let's go make sure that everything's okay. And I'm like, okay. Now, on the way there, we find out her secrets. Okay, the secret she mentioned two weeks ago. Um, When she, 13 years ago, back when she was 19 years old, she was pregnant. Okay, she was pregnant. She had an ectopic pregnancy. And when she had to have surgery, because she also lost the baby because she was pregnant in her tubes, and she lost, they had to remove one of her fallopian tubes because it was a, a, it was in such bad shape based on the ectopic, the ectopic pregnancy. So she only has one fallopian tube left. And she's known this for the past 13 years, but she never told Ray. She said, I don't talk about it because it's a painful memory. And I also have just never told him. Now, this is my thing about that. Y'all have had consistent communications and conversations about one the family, one kids, how could you not mention you only have one fallopian tube? Like, that's a conversation that needs to be had, but she did not want to have it with him. So, at the doctor's office, when they asked her, like, okay, so, you know, you, you've never been pregnant before, she's like, um, well, I was pregnant one time before, and he looked like, the fuck she just said? Did she say she was pregnant one time? I know she just said she was pregnant one she didn't tell me that shit. Okay, so Ray looked shocked because he didn't know. And she then explains it to the to the nurse. Um, when the nurse leaves out to get time for the doctor to come in, she she then has to explain it to him what it because she never really know, he didn't really know what it meant. And so he's like, Oh, okay, so that could be a, a reason that you know we haven't gotten pregnant because it may be just a little bit more difficult because you have one tube left. She's like, well, yeah, you like, well, we can see what the doctor say. So when the doctor comes in, he said, we have to, you know, check out your other fallopian tube just to be sure that it's, you know, saying healthy and it's viable in order for you to get pregnant. Because you do only need one, but it's just, you know, it just takes some time sometimes. And so Ray was upset that she kept that she kept that secret because he like, you know, we have consistently had conversation about having kids. We've consistently had conversations about wanting multiple children so you know and then her saying how she's getting older when she's only 33 you know how could she not mention this could be an issue and i agree i feel like if a woman knows as she she actively knows hey i have one fallopian tube that is a conversation to have with someone when y'all are discussing having children okay because that will affect that and if it's harder for you to get pregnant you know, he should have the right to want to deal with that because it affects his life, too. The same way if a man can't have kids. They say a man, for some reason, he knows she blanks or he's had upset or whatever it may be. He would need to tell this woman who wants children that it may be harder for her to get pregnant by him because of whatever his thing could be. So I do think people need to have those conversations up front because you do not want to blindside anyone into knowing that they now can't have this or that. And so the road may be harder or different for them. And they didn't know this beforehand. So, you know, but we'll see what happens. Because I'm like, she she knew she had one too. So that, to me, you know, she wasn't lying, but she was for sure omitting information that she knew, you know, was pertinent to the conversation or whatever. So again, girl, I guess so, okay? And then lastly... Okay, lastly, uh, we have um, Lacey and Shane, okay? Now, they went to go get a polygraph test, okay? Because as he said, do you want me to take a polygraph test to prove I'm not cheating? And she said, yes. Okay, so now we are here. Okay, we are there. And he takes the test, and he kind of fails. It was very, very vague. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because usually they'll say, you know, deception indicated, or they'll say, you know, he failed this test. And they didn't really do that, okay? Uh, he brought up how there were three questions that Shane had a reaction to certain questions. But the guy also said he does not know what those reactions meant. On these three questions, his reactions were different than, you know, his reactions on other questions. So that kind of means he lied, but not so much. So the three questions were, you know, um, are you holding a secret from your wife? He said no, and there was something there, some kind of reaction, meaning it was deception indicated, okay? Here, you know, I'm watching more, so I get that from. Um, and they asked, have you lied to your wife about where you are 
or where you're going to be with a man or a woman for sex. And I guess he said, don't it's a deception indicated, okay? And then the third one was, have you um, communicated with a man or a woman? No, he no, he has communicated with men or a man via text, phone, social media, or in person for sexual purposes. So all those things he failed. And Lacey freaked out. Honey, she was sitting there, boom. Like, who are you? <laughs> Her face when he said that third, she was like, with, with men? With men? And he was like, yeah, with men. The fact that Shane sat there so calmly makes me feel like he made it be bisexual. Because he didn't deny it, okay? Well, they didn't show him denying it. He just said, oh, is it, is it for men too? Hmm. Well, you know, I, I I have not cheated on Lacey. And I was like, but that ain't what they, <laughs> it's like, you know, he like, I haven't cheated on her. And I'm like, well, that does not mean you haven't done things um, that you don't consider cheating. Because if you are communicating with men, you know, that's still something that your wife should know. And so she's pissed. And she gets up, I, I, have to, I have to leave. I can't, I can't be in here. I can't be in here. And so, again, because again, he never really even denied doing it. It was weird how he sat there so calm when the results was being read or whatever. And he, he just he just didn't act surprised for me. Like, he knew he would fail. And he was like, fuck it. Because um, I'm like, I don't think he knew going in that they would ask him questions about him talking to me and too. And so when he said, you know, I haven't, I haven't cheated on Lacey. The guy said, well, that's true. He hasn't, he hasn't cheated on you. You know, that part I can say is true. But Lacey leaves out the room. Now she's crying in the hallway to the producers. You know, she's like, you know, I just, you know, they said with men, you know, I don't, I don't really want to know. And I think, I think he may be gay. I was like, girl. And the producers say, well, if he was bisexual, would that, would that bother you? She's like, yes. It, yes, it would. I'm like, I don't know. I was like, girl. <laughs> and it's not funny because it's just, <laughs> girl. Anyway, in the room, Shane is in there with the man still. And Shane then said, you know, that's not fair because he said, I fail because of my OnlyFans. Okay, this might fail because, you know, I do talk to men for money on OnlyFans. Okay, I do. I have, you know, I have further with men online for money, but only on my only fans, even if I did not really want to be with them, I would flirt to make money. And I mean <laughs> he said he would he would agree to meet up, but he wouldn't. He would agree to well he would agree to say he wanted to meet up, but he would not go through with it. So again he's like I, I have talked to communicated with men, you know, for sexual things because you know of of, of uh, only fans. And I'm like <laughs> he likes men and it ain't nothing wrong with that you know what I'm saying that's the thing that's the thing but I feel like him making it seem as if you know I don't want to be with men if you are flirting with men and say, like what did you say like if you if you said put your dick in my mouth like that's 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 kind of gay you know what I'm saying like you can't you know <laughs> that's not playing that's that's you doing the girl I cannot but you know when she come back in the room and the doctor dude, not the doctor dude, but the, the detective dude said, you know what I'm saying? Well, he did. He wasn't as, he wasn't forthcoming and saying his, you know, online stuff for his OnlyFans is where he has done those things, but it was for money. And she know he's on OnlyFans, but she was too. So it's weird because now it's like, well, did he, but is he doing anything outside of the OnlyFans stuff? Okay. But he then say, well, I want you to take a test to see if you have been lying about things. Oh, you want to ask me questions? What, what if I cheated on you? Is what you want to know? Is that what you want to know, Shane? He said, well, yeah, and I want you to take a test. So he can strap your ass up, ask these questions. No, you can ask me right now. Ask me right now, Shane. He's like, no, I want you to get strapped up, okay? I'm like, this shit is crazy, okay? And that's how it goes off. But girl, she was like, with men, I think he may be gay, you know? Her, I just cannot. Anyway, that was the whole episode. I hope you all enjoyed my review. Do not forget to like the video, comment in the comment section, share it on your social for on your social media. And y'all know to have a good day. Gotta go. I will see you when I see you. Mm -hmm.